Hi, welcome to part eight of building your own single board 6502 computer for the hopper runtime. <clears throat> um, what have I added this time? Um, I've added the ACIA, um, ACIA um, the 6850 Motorola serial port. Um, so now we should be able to communicate with it. Um, but the first thing we need to do is program the uh, hopper runtime onto our EEPROM. Yeah. Okay, so let's do that. So where's the hopper runtime? Um, in your install, if you go to source runtime, um, there's two runtimes in here that are written in, um, well, that are written in the hopper uh, environment. So the first one is the microcontroller runtime that's actually written in hopper. And then the 6502 runtime is written in hopper 6502 assembly. So let's look at that one. It's called um, um, R6502. So R6502, as you can see, it's an ASM file, the Hopper 6502 assembly. And there's a bit of configuration in the file. Um, it's important to uh, let the Hopper runtime know what the speed of your CPU is. Um, that affects things like timing. Um, so the, the timer needs to know how, how fast we're ticking um, to be able to make the timer work correctly. Um, and then you also need to specify whether you're using the Western Design Center 65CO2S or whether you're using the original MOS chip. And depending on which one you choose, it'll build um, for the appropriate, it'll build, it'll build instructions for the, the appropriate target. Um, 65CO2S makes for much smaller code, um, especially because I've got the zero page, uh, I've got the IO chips on the zero page. So that's what all these FTFs here are like to try and squeeze it into a 16K ROM. And even if we're using a 32K ROM, um, the objective here is to only use the top half of the 32K ROM. And if we do that, um, that allows us to in future use the ex these extra four pins here and put in a 64K RAM chip instead of a 32K RAM chip. So we can use 48K of the RAM and 16k of the rom so we can have more ram so that's why i'm trying to keep it under 16ks and there's all these options here to decide optionally to leave things out of it because you can get it down to less than 8k if you leave out um, uh, quite a few options a fully functional version of the hopper runtime on a minimal uh, instruction set that you leave out the packed instructions you leave out fast voting point uh, fast integer um, functionality and you can get it into 8k rom anyway we don't care about that right now because we're going to go into a 32k ROM no matter what. So um, 8 megahertz and um, 65CO2S are the only ones you care about. Now in the options, make sure you've got run optimizer because we want that makes it small uh, and faster. And uh, disassembler and save on build. And then we press F7 to build. At the bottom of the screen, we can see the steps going past, pre-processing, assembling. It's a little bit slower than the other program, optimizing because it's a bit bigger and then it should be disassembling at the end. Generating code. There we go, disassembling, okay. And we can fade to our uh, big screen and uh, go and load up our EEPROM programmer. Um, still the same chip we just used in the last video. You know, we chose this Atmel uh, 28C256. Um, we're going to load up our program. It's called R6502X. It's in the bin folder, hopper bin folder. Um, we want it to start at the beginning of our ROM, which is address C. Uh, sorry, address 8000. Um, and the at the end of the ROM, we still see that that correctly loaded our vectors, and then our program should be at the beginning. Oh, the program is actually in the middle. There it is, because it's 16K ROM. It's... Uh, uh, a source to start in the middle of the ROM. So it's important to tell the EEPROM programmer where the beginning of the ROM is. The beginning of the ROM is A000 hex. And because this was built for 16K, um, it's starting up at uh, C000 hex, which in the ROM is, you know, C minus 8, which is 4. Okay. Anyway, that's why I say the easiest way to check that you've positioned it in the correct place in the ROM is to check that the last six bytes are the uh, vectors. Okay, and we'll program our chip. <clears throat> uh, 
there we go pop it out like i say turn the power off on your board before you put your eprom in right and yeah there we go and i'm going to switch to the other screen and power it up and nothing should happen yep okay now how do we test that it's working <clears throat> Well, there's a testing folder um, with some applications that have been written for the minimal runtime, some tests, and one of them again is a blink. So um, this is the minimal blink uh, for the hopper environment. And I, again, I checked that I've got my option set to optimize or disable, save on build. So this is not in assembly now, this is in hopper, the high level programming language we're getting somewhere now. So we build that. <clears throat> And then when I'm running in Hopper, the whole point of Hopper is it's a symbolic debugger environment. I can launch the debugger now. So I can F5 and launch the debugger. And, and then I just F5 to run it. And we've got some flashing going on. And then in our serial port, we've got the number of seconds since we put the power in. So that's what the seconds here is, time seconds. And that's showing us that our clock speed is correct because we're getting two numbers um, for each cycle. And it's a 500 millisecond delay. So we're, we are counting up in uh, correctly in seconds, which means it is an eight megahertz uh, Chris, uh, can oscillator. There you go. And so now you've got full debugging, control C to break and you know, single step through here. Uh, how nice is that? Okay, um, while we're here, if I uh, alt F4 out of here, there's another way to connect to the board. It's called the hopper monitor HM. So when I connect with that, it, it gives me some diagnostics here. It says, um, you know, I've got, I've got a pro, it thinks, it, oh, it's got a program loader already, even though it's not there. Um, but I can load again. I can still load Blink like that, and it'll go and find the hexy file. So a hexy file rather than, rather than a hex file. It'll load the Blink hex, oh, iHex, uh, which is the hexy file converted into Intel hex file. Um, yeah. There's multiple formats. So .hex is also an iHex file, but it's an iHex file of an assembler file, whereas .ihex is an Intel hex file. That's the Intel hex version of a .hexy file, which is a hopper executable. And the same executable will run on multiple hopper devices. So it'll run on Windows, it'll run on microcontrollers, and it'll run on your board. So I can press F5 here, and we get the same thing. And if I press Control c here, it's slightly different. So instead of being source level debugging, you are now debugging at the hopper instruction level. Um, and you've got a um, you've got a value stack, uh, you've got a call stack. So um, you can look at registers. Um, you can just dump memory, right? So this is the sort of low level way to debug hopper programs so uh, again what you're looking here at here is not 65502 assembly this is the hopper virtual machine bytecodes that are running on the runtime that we've just built so the runtime is the hopper virtual machine which is running this code and we can put breakpoints in here as well um in question mark will tell you what all your commands are so you can put you can do breakpoints um yeah you can transfer programs to uh Oh, anyway, there's a lot you can do with this, um, and there's uh, tons of videos on on what you do with your board now that I've already written. Okay, but we want to we're going to want to do one more thing. So if I quit out of here, and if I power cycle the board, nothing happens, right? There's no program loaded um, because the program was in RAM, and when I turned the power off, it went away. So if I go hop them on. And I load Blink again, and then I run it again. There we go, we're blinking. But as soon as I turn the power off, it's gone. Okay, uh, let's fix that. Okay, what did I do? I added a chip, I added the serial EEPROM, right? That's all I did. Um, now and I'm back in Hopper Monitor, and now I'm gonna load Blink. And if we run, we expect to blink, yeah. So control C, quit. We're out of hopper mon. Now I'm gonna turn the power off. So, and then I'm gonna turn the power on again. And the program persists. So um, 
what Hopper, what Hopper will do is um, when it boots up the uh, when it boots up the virtual machine, it'll check to see if there's a program on the EEPROM, and if there is, it'll run it. So sometimes you don't want that to happen. Um, and okay, if I run Hopper Hoppermon now, it should break. So let's run Hoppermon. It stalls the. You can see it, it stalled the the, um, the flashing light, but because of the CRC. And because on my machine, I've got all the debug info for the program that was loaded, it can say which program was loaded, and it'll know what the source is. And it stopped in the middle of the program about to do a jump. So if I F10, it'll do the jump, and it'll carry on running. So we can keep running the program. So we just connected to an existing running program um, on, our, on our device. So you can do that. You can break into existing running programs and debug them um, on this device. Um, anyway, yeah, so if I want to boot, if I want to reset but not run the program, so, so if I reset now again, uh, let's quit out of the Hoppermon again. Um, if I reset, it'll load the program and start running it. But if I don't want to run the program, if I just want to reset without loading what's in the EEPROM because somehow that thing that's in the EEPROM is crashing the machine, I hold both the uh, user button and the reset button down. So I hold them both down, and then I release the reset button first, and then I release this one. So that's how you reset without running the program. Is That's the only thing that Hopper uses the, the user button for. It uses it um, during the boot process to say, don't, don't, boot the, don't boot from the program that's on the EEPROM. Um, other than that, it's, uh, and if I press reset again, of course, it's now booting again because I didn't have my finger on it. Other than that, the user button's available for user um, use. Right. Okay. There's an interesting thing. I should do that in, inside Hoppermon. Okay. So if we're in Hoppermon and we say run again, carry on running the program. So it's running the program. If I press the NMI button, it's break. So the NMI breaks into the program where it was, and I can press F5 to continue again. And then I can press break to stop the program at that point. And at that point, I can go and look at the registers and I can go and look at the, the stack and the call stack. Yeah. Or I can step, look at the source. Yeah. So you can break into your program in the low level. Uh, the break button works in the, in the symbolic debugger as well. Anyhow, um, you've just got Hopper running on your um, board. Well done. Um, I'm going to end this series of videos right now on this one um, just to publish it um, but I will continue to add to it um, over time like for example I can do one on how you use the OLED display and um, there's a lot I could do to add on to the end of this video we could um, do some experiments using the parallel port you know hook up some other peripherals um, I'll wait for feedback as well to see what else to add to the end of this video like if there's some subject I didn't uh, I wasn't very good at um, covering i can add another video with a bit more depth but thank you for sitting uh, through all my videos of this series